Why are you taking my children away from me? Hey guys, welcome to Life with Zoe and I'm excited to be filming this. I'm excited to be talking to you guys. I'm excited to be here. I'm just excited overall. So we're talking about motherhood today. Mm. You know, as I was dressing my children up this morning, it just dropped in my spirit. You should talk about motherhood because motherhood is a beautiful journey. It's an awesome experience. It's the most rewarding journey, but yet it could be very, very stressful. Yes, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure we know this. It could be very, very stressful and it could be very, very challenging, but it's the most rewarding experience ever. Trust me. So ever wondered, am I doing the right things? Like as a mother, especially as a new mom, I'm a new mom. My babies are, of course, I'm a mom of twin boys. <laughs> My babies are 18 months old and they'll be, they'll be, they should be 19 months old on the 12th of January. So as a new mom, these are the things I've noticed. Like sometimes you're wondering, am I doing the right things? You know, we want the best for our children. We want them to be happy. We want them to be healthy. I mean, let me speak for myself. I want to be sure that I'm feeding my children the best nutrients. I want to be sure that they're eating when they should eat. I just want to be sure that they are fine. And most times I find myself second guessing myself, like especially when I'm about going to bed, I'm thinking, okay, so do I react? Did I do the right thing? Should I? try a different approach i'm sure every woman every mother has been here has been at this point where you're thinking if you are the best version of yourself as a mother as you should i hope that makes sense all right so i'm gonna just talk about a few things that i have noticed a few things i have learned in my 18 months of being a mother and trust me i prayed to god for a very very long time to be a mother and finally god blessed me with two beautiful boys on the fifth year of my marriage that will be a topic later but now let's talk about the journey the journey so far <laughs> let's talk about it accepting help let's normalize accepting help well for me when i give birth to my babies before then my husband and i we planned we had their crib in our room we said okay when we come back from the hospital they'll sleep here while at night he'll wake up and take care of them that was our decision that was our plan but when we got back from the hospital the day i was discharged we were discharged from the hospital i was still feverish i was still feeling a bit of pain here and there because i gave birth to them through cesarean so when we got back he decided that he wants to let me rest so he took the babies away and slept in another room with them i just had my bath and i came out i used to see my children i didn't see them in the crib like we discussed i'm this kind of person that when we say we're going to do something let's do it let's stick to it let's not change anything that's how i am i got back i got out of the bathroom i didn't see the children and i came out i saw him with them and i'm like why are you taking my children away from me <laughs> why <laughs> now that i think about it it is very 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 funny because i don't know why i would think he's taking my children away from me he said go in and rest and i was like no 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 let's normalize accepting help most times we feel that nobody can take care of our kids like we do there's nothing wrong with that mindset but sometimes it's okay to just let go that decision my husband made was the best decision for me because i think that's even one of the major reasons i didn't go through any postpartum anything because i had good support my husband took care of the children at night while I rested at night. During the day, he lets go and my mom and I take care of the children. That was the best decision ever, honestly. And I'm grateful that he, he actually did that. So I know you're watching this, baby. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, rest. Rest. What is even rest? Can we even define rest? As mothers, it's more like ever since we gave birth, we don't even know what rest is. Like I used to love sleep so much. I used to be somebody who could sleep for 10 hours, but now, if I even see eight hours, I'll be grateful. Sometimes six hours, sometimes five hours because I have other things I want to do. I don't want to just completely let go. If you check my page, you see that I work out now. So I have to wake up very early in the morning to work out. I don't even know what rest is. As I'm talking to you right now, my eyes are heavy. I need sleep, but we need to let go sometimes. We need to rest because if you don't rest, you will not be at the best mental space. And if you're not at the best mental space, 
you will not be the best mother you can be to your children. So when your children are sleeping, rest. I had to learn this before now. I thought to myself that when they are sleeping, I wake up and quickly do what I have to do. But now, well, when the thing hits me, I just realize that once they are sleeping, me too, I will go find a spot and lie down and sleep. And in case you can hear their voice, please ignore. Because right now, <laughs> this is the only time I can do this video. So let's learn to rest, okay? If you have help, if you have supportive hands around, maybe during the day, you can take time out once you're done with whatever you think you, they need at that point. If you're done taking care of them, you're done. Well, can we ever be done taking care of them? No. But at that point, you're done doing what you need to do for them at that second. You tell whoever it is, please, can I go and rest? Please help me take care of the children while I go and rest. You go to your bedroom, you lie down and you sleep. Yes! You can take one hour nap or 30 minutes nap, whatever. But just make sure that you try and get some rest, okay? Living helps. When I got married, I made up my mind that I did not want living helps because I see so many horror stories online and even around me. And I told my husband that I am not okay with living helps. Maybe what we'll do, we'll get somebody who comes probably three or four times a week. She cleans the house and then she leaves. I started that when I was pregnant. I had somebody who comes, she cleans and she leaves. Now my kids are grown and I'm at a point where I need more hands, but I'm still not open to leave in helps. And if ever I'm going to get someone to leave in, I must be living in a mansion so that the person will just stay in the BQ. That is me. I just want my home to be my home, my privacy and everything. So it depends on what you want. As for me, I don't want living help. So right now I'm looking for a nanny, somebody who will come, take care of the children and then she leaves. I just want to be so present. It's not like there's anything wrong with living helps, but most times some mothers tend to let go, you know, let go of the reins and then your house help does everything. She bathes the children, she cooks for the children, especially I'm not talking about mothers who have to go to work. It's easier for me because I work from home and my husband sometimes works from home, so it's easier. So, but most times the house help does everything. If for any reason the house help leaves, you find out that you, you try to, you know, cope with what is going on. I think the best way to go about it is even if you have a living help, try and be involved. Try and, try and also do some things. If you want to cook, try and cook the days you can okay remember i talked about rest so always have your rest but always make sure you're also involved in your children's life so that's what i have deduced so far as a mom i want to be so involved in my boy's life that i'm not even thinking about another baby because i know that it's a lot of work and and i'm thinking to myself will i be able to give my hundred percent to another child if I give birth. Until I get to that space when I'm sure that I can do that, then maybe I can have another baby. But for now, I just want to focus on them and them alone. Back to living help. So you can have your living help or be involved in your children's life, okay? <laughs> so for me, like I said, no living helps. And has it been easy? No, it hasn't been so easy. I'm not going to lie. It's been challenging. But I think, let me not jump it this thing i'm about to say i'll say it very soon so let's hold on okay pray for your kids pray for your kids is important too. do you know that i pray for my children more than i pray for myself and i'm sure every mother does the same thing we have to normalize always praying for them because we live in a world of social media the world you grew up in and the world we're currently raising our children aren't the same probably they might be the same but social media helps enhance it even more normalize praying for your kids normalize laying hands on your kids normalize declaring god's word on your kids i started doing this from the day i gave birth to my boys till date i always lay hands on them morning and night during morning devotion and evening devotion i lay my hands on them i declare god's word you have the wisdom of god the wisdom of God is at work in you, illuminating your mind, unveiling mysteries and secrets to you. These boys are 18 months. You are far above, far high, high above your peers. These are the things I say to my children. You have a calm and a sweet spirit. You're obedient. You are receptive towards the things of God. These are the things I declare on them. You will not now finish declaring things like that on them. And you now say, this boy, you know they're here. Eh? Why are you so stubborn? Mm -mm -mm -mm. So let's not 
let's let's take away negativity you might say but at that point the child is being stubborn at that point yeah maybe but no you will not declare such things you say you hear you are obedient because words are powerful there's power in spoken words words can make or mar an individual so you want the best for your children normalize speaking positive words my help um the lady who cleans my house was telling me the other day how her son is so stubborn he's doing this i listened all i could hear was how stubborn her son was and i said something to her did you just notice that everything you said to me is how stubborn he is and do you tell him you're stubborn she said yes i should just tell him you will not kill me i smiled and said to her i said you have to stop you have to speak positively over your son's life he might be acting like this but don't worry the more you declare what you want to see in him very soon he will start acting the right thing out so please be patient with him he's a growing child all right as i'm telling you this i'm telling myself to be patient <laughs> no negative words try hard not to speak negative words over your children okay maybe they are going to school now my kids have not started school but in case your kids are going to school and they are not learning as much as they are supposed to learn their results aren't showing what they're supposed to show or if they come back from school you ask them how was today and they can't they can't really really tell you what they learned you lay your hands on them and say you are smart you are super intelligent words are powerful so as a mother i've come to understand that words are powerful let's move on another thing as a mother we know that when your kids are feeling sick it's more or less as if you are sick too oh my goodness can somebody just tell me why we feel that way like the separation anxiety and everything i feel that too when i leave my children for a minute or two and i step out i'm thinking about them how are they doing are they have they eaten are they this my husband will tell me i thought you said you want to why am i why am i deviating wait hold on we'll come back to this but Let's go back to kids feeling sick. We feel everything. When they are in pain, we want to take it away. I remember when I took my children for immunization and the first, I think the three months in immunization, after they had it, they were so restless. I was so pained. I was so pained. I was like, why didn't they tell me this in the hospital? Why didn't they tell me that they are going to go through this? Let me prepare my mind. <laughs> you know, we can't help the feeling where, you know, we are always worried about our children. And that's back to why we should pray all the time for our children but motherhood is so beautiful but let's not forget that we are also wives that's why i said let's let me go back so let me go back to what i was saying before when my husband and i go out i'm like five minutes into the drive i'm like let me call home let me find out that that women claim are fine because that's their name let me find out that they're fine like i thought you said you want to spend time with me so motherhood is beautiful but we are also wives so we should also you know create time for our husbands let's let's not let it consume us we were once dating before they came we were once in love right and we are still in love so let's make sure that the fact that we have children doesn't kill or burn down the flame of our marriages let's learn to stroke you know the fire the passion ignite it i talk about all this on my other channel heart to heart with zoe on marriage and everything you can go check it out okay should i put the link maybe i will link it somewhere here or there <laughs> Oh my goodness, this is like my first ever official video on Life with Zoe and I'm so excited. You can tell, right? Having supportive system or supportive spouse, I sometimes I wonder how women whose husbands are not so present, or let me not use the word present, they are not so supportive when it comes to the kids. I wonder how they cope because if it's that one, God blessed me and I'm grateful to God for my husband. I'm sorry if you're on this channel you always hear me talk about how grateful i am to my husband because most times they are no they, are, they aren't so you know they don't make men like this anymore and if they do they are very very scarce so when you have such men always appreciate them i'm grateful to god because my husband is so supportive it just makes the motherhood for me so easy breezy i have two boys twins meaning that most times they need attention at the same time Sometimes I could get overwhelmed, like so overwhelmed that I don't even know what to do, what to say. So overwhelmed. And he steps in and, and be like, you go into the bedroom, go and rest. I've got this. <laughs> so every time he says that to me, I'm like, oh, thank you, baby. <laughs> ah. But really, back to what I was saying. If your spouse isn't as supportive, you could, you know, find a way to work it out maybe you need living help 
because my husband is supportive that's what i'm saying with my full chest i don't want living help if he was not supportive probably i would have gotten a living help when my sister came um to my house during christmas she looked at me one day and said so what do you now do in this house i'm like What do you not do in this house? I'm like, I do things. She said, I don't understand you. Because my husband, after the Omugwa phase, if you don't know what the Omugwa phase is, is when your mother, like for me, my mom came and I gave birth. She stayed with me for three months. And then maybe she left. My mother-in-law being her first twin grandchildren, my mother-in-law came. She stayed with us from that uh, three months. So I think she stayed for like a month or two. By the time she was leaving, they were about almost five months old or five months old about either five months old or almost five months old immediately after everybody left us we had to get ourselves back like the honeymoon phase is over so taking care of the children at first on sunday when we're going to church i'll bathe the boys dress the boys my husband will get ready for the first baby you feed the first baby the second baby by the time i'm done bathing him he's done feeding the first baby then he feeds the second baby but no matter what we do we still get to church a little bit late and then he was like, we should work on our timing. I said, okay, please, can you help? He said, but I'm already helping. I said, yes, I know you're helping. But can you help even more? When I bathe the first baby, can you dress him up while I bathe the second baby? If you're still dressing the first baby up, then I dress the second baby up. Then we both go and feed them together. By doing that, we we'll both save time. He said, okay. And then he helped that Sunday. The same thing I just said, he did it. We were early to church. He was like, we're early. I said, yes, that's because you help more. So please, let's, let's continue with this pattern. I wasn't expecting him to bathe the boys at that time because they were really, really small and tender. He had not done it before. But now the boys are grown. I think before they clocked one or by the time they clocked one, he had started bathing them. So he bathes them. I dress them up. By the time I'm done dressing them up, he feeds them because they eat more when they are with him, not with me. They don't see me finish. I don't know why. <laughs> when I'm feeding them, they don't eat as much. But when he's feeding them, they eat so much. And sometimes I'm like, why? He said, don't worry, don't worry, I got this. <laughs> so that system has been working for us and we are still doing the same thing till date. So that makes me not to feel exhausted, makes me not to feel overwhelmed because I have a supportive spouse. But if you don't have a supportive spouse, find something, just make it work get your living help but even if you have a living help try and also be involved in your children's life i think that is it that is all i know we have a lot when you talk about motherhood there's a lot to talk about there is postpartum depression i didn't go through that i almost went through that when i was in the hospital but god helped me i didn't go through any of that so let's normalize accepting help let's normalize resting and if for any reason you're away from your children as I'm talking to you now, I'm also telling myself, if we're away from them for some time, for some hours, let's not feel guilty, okay? Because the fact that you're also a mother doesn't mean that every dream you have will crush. Except your dream is just to become a mother. But I'm sure as an individual, you always want more. Okay, I think that's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe, share. Tell a friend to tell a friend to come and subscribe to my channel. I have a lot to share with you guys. This is just a tip of the iceberg i'll see you on my next one until then keep living and be the best version of yourself bye <laughs> bye